What is humankind's greatest invention? Wheel. Wow. Wheel. So what? Wheel. The, the plow. The plow. Yeah, the wheel. It's the wheel. I'd say it's the wheel. <laughs> right? <laughs> wheel. <laughs> Go outside. Just take a walk outside. Take a, take a walk around campus. See how many wheels you see. <laughs> and then see how many plows you see. <laughs> and this is, this is a real thing. This guy did a bunch of research. <laughs> we will see that the wheel is used every day by billions and billions of people. Okay? So the question is, do we know how the wheel works? The safe answer is no. The safe answer is no. Because today we'll figure out how the wheel works. There are misconceptions and preconceptions about the wheel. You think you understand the wheel, but you don't. Even though you were raised from an early childhood with wheels, right? Remember little toy cars? and uh, wagons and uh, tricycles and bicycles and if you didn't play with toy trucks, played with dolls, there is road, road rage Barbie, There's all sorts of things that grow. So now my question is, I will ask you a simple question first of all. To understand the wheel, we need to understand the axis of rotation of the wheel, okay? And remember, when we have something rotating, we need to specify the axis. And we specify the axis as the set of points that are stationary while the rest of the object is moving above it. Waiting for the conversation there to be done. Are we done? 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 Okay, so I will ask a single question, and this now, I will ask many questions because I want to show you what you understand about the wheel and what you don't. So please answer my questions. So first question is, what is the axis of rotation of a rolling wheel? Here's a rolling can, same thing. What is the axis of rotation? How many people say it is the center of the can? Let's see a show of hands. Show of hands. How many people say it is not the center of the can? One, two, three, three, four. Four. Okay. The rest are undecided. No undecideds. How do we figure out the axis of rotation? Well, let's do a simple experiment first. And the simple experiment is this. I have this <coughs> meter stick hanging from a nail. And undeniably so, the axis of rotation is right here, because that stationary is clamped to the table. Okay. What I'm going to do is pull with a force, I'm going to apply a force with a string, and I can only pull with a string, remember, not push. So if I pull with a string, let's see in what direction, the force is in that direction, the tension in the string, in what direction is it rotating? Clockwise or counterclockwise? Clockwise. 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 Suppose I move farther up. In what direction is it rotating? Clockwise or counterclockwise? Clockwise. Farther up? Farther up, farther up. Clockwise or counterclockwise? Clockwise. Clockwise. Let's keep going. Clockwise or counterclockwise? Clockwise. Clockwise. All the way up there. Very close to the pivot. Clockwise or counterclockwise? Clockwise. Clockwise. Go to the pivot and I pull. Is it turning? Yeah. Because the torque is zero, R perpendicular is zero. Everywhere over here, the torque is not zero. When I get to the pivot, 
the torque is zero. And if I go past the pivot, let's go past the pivot, and I pull in the same direction now, which way do you think it will rotate? Clockwise or counterclockwise? Counterclockwise. See? Above the pivot is counterclockwise, below the pivot is clockwise. Okay? If I pull in that direction, let's write it down so that we don't forget. So, above pivot. What do we say above pivot? Counterclockwise? Counterclockwise. Yeah. Counterclockwise. Yeah. Below pivot? What do we say? Clockwise. Clockwise. CW. And let's draw the force so that we know in what direction the force is. The force is in that direction. Okay? All right. Now we have this guy here. That's cool. No, there is enough. Look. Okay. Let's go down here. Where is the pivot? Do you think? Let's say that, let's say the pivot is here, right? Yes, sir. I'm below the pivot. If I pull in the same direction, in what direction is this thing going to rotate? Clockwise. Clockwise or counterclockwise? Clockwise. Clockwise. And below the pivot, clockwise. See that? Okay. <laughs> Suppose I go farther up. Clockwise or counterclockwise? Clockwise. Suppose I go up here. Clockwise or counterclockwise? Clockwise. Clockwise? <laughs> if the pivot is here, it should rotate clockwise. clockwise. Is it rotating clockwise? No. No, I'm above the pivot. Am I not? Where is the pivot? Right at the point of contact. Somewhere over there. And if I pull now, I'm pulling, it's not it's not really moving. So the point of contact of the wheel with the surface is the axis of rotation. Not this. Got it? Yeah? Everybody got it? All right, let's see if you really got it. <laughs> we'll bring up the big artillery. Yo-yo. This is Yo-Yo Ma. <laughs> That's Yo-Yo Ma Junior. That's what we call him. Okay? Now, this string is wound on the inside. Let me show you. Okay? There it is. And I'm going to pull in the same direction. Is Yo-Yo Ma going to rotate clockwise or counterclockwise? What does it say there? Above the pivot counterclockwise. So which way is your your mind going to move? Towards me or away from me? It's to you. Towards me. Okay, let's see. Yeah. Okay, you got it. Let's see if you really, really got it. I'm gonna flip your your mind over and turn him around. So now the string is coming from, let's move this line up some more. The string is coming out the bottom. Now is your Yoma going to come towards me or away from me? Away from me? Actually, it's going to come towards me. How many people say away from me that way? How many people say towards me? Eh, fewer people. It's an interesting exercise. As we said, <laughs> the pivot is the point of contact. The pivot is the point of contact. In either case, in both cases, I am above the pivot. If I'm above the pivot, according to what we said, the rotation is going to be counterclockwise. Okay? Believe it. All right. <laughs> well, we're not ready for it. Yeah, I know. I'm, uh, I'm, uh, okay. 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 Okay
Yes. So we can make some predictions. We can make predictions in that. Let's draw a wheel. And let's say this wheel is rolling without friction, without slipping. What does rolling without slipping mean? Well, here's the wheel. Okay. It means it does this. That is, the point of contact, the point of contact is instantaneously at rest with respect to the surface. Because that's the axis of rotation. That's the point that's instantaneously at rest. If it were rolling with friction, it will be spinning. Like when you push on the accelerator and you hear the tires spinning the tires, that's what's happening. Okay? So in this case, we have this thing rolling without friction. And instantaneously, the point of contact is the axis of rotation. Let's call this point P. Okay? Now point P is instantaneously at rest while the rest of the wheel, and let's say that the wheel is advancing in that way to the right. Okay? Let's say that the center of mass, first of all, which is at distance R from the point of contact, has some speed which I call the speed of the center of mass, B, C, M, right? If this thing is rotating about an axis right here, then I can figure out what omega is, the angular speed about this point. Omega is going to be B, C, M times divided by R, right? That's what we learned. Okay. Now, this is up the center. What about a point that is up here? How fast is that moving? What can we predict? How fast do you think it's moving? Same. Very fast. The same speed? Same as VCM? Greater than VCM? Greater? How much greater? Two times. Why two times? Because it's twice the radius, it's twice as far. And if, if omega, if uh, the speed v is equal to omega times r, let's call this point a, v sub a is going to be omega times 2r, right? 2r. But 2r times omega is equal to twice the speed of the center of mass. Do you believe that? Mm -hmm. How many people believe that? How many people don't believe that? <laughs> Everybody believes that? Anybody not sure? <laughs> not sure. OK, good. I'm glad you're not sure, because I have a nice demonstration that shows you. And will convince you, OK? All right, great. So we have this. And we'll take Mr. Meter stick here. <laughs> and what we're going to do is I need another piece. Okay. We start with the center of the can and this end of the meter stick at the same point. And this eraser marks the point, right? So what I'm going to do is roll this meter stick without slipping, of course, on the cylinder. And if I do that, I get this, which everybody is familiar with. Now let's put a marker where the center of the can is, and let's put a marker where the end of the meter stick is. And we see that this distance is half that distance. So the meter stick advanced in the same time twice the distance that the center of the can advanced. So the actual rotation indeed is the point of contact. We made a prediction. And this prediction is borne out by experiment. Now, everybody should believe that, right? Okay. Here is the final test. Here's the final test. No. I'm not going to sit on this thing. I can't. That would be my job. I can't. <laughs> Has everybody written one of these? Yes. No? Okay. 
okay? This is doctored so that the uh, handlebar doesn't turn, okay? We screw, put the screw through so the handlebar doesn't turn. Otherwise, we won't be able to demonstrate. Okay, so now, if I, you know how it works. <laughs> if I were to sit on this and I wanted to go forward, you can go forward and backwards on these tricycles, right? So if I wanted to go forward, what do I need to do? Push here and it goes forward. If I want to go backwards, what do I do? Push here. Push at the bottom one, right? Right, okay. So let's see. If I pull now here, in which way is the bicycle going to move? Forward or backward? How many people say forward? How many people say backward? Nobody. By golly, you're right, forward. <laughs> Okay, you know what's coming next. Just to make sure you understand. You're going to pull in the same direction right at the bottom. Is it going to move forward or backward? How many people say backward? How many people say forward? What does it say on the board? What does it say on the board? On the board it says forward. <laughs> Son of a god. <laughs> That's impossible. <laughs> That's crazy. Even when you realize those things are big enough, it's <laughs> Now, yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy. So, why does it go forward? Why does it go forward in both cases? Yes. Because it's below, because it's always um, above the pivot point. Well, you know, imagine a kid sitting here, right? And the kid is pushing on, the, on this pedal in the same direction that I pulled. Why does the kid go backward and when I pull with a string, the bicycle goes forward? Think about it. Think about it and answer the question to yourselves. Answer the question to yourselves and then you'll say, I understand wheels. I'm an engineer and by golly, I understand wheels. Okay. All right. You have physical check. Now, we'll do rolling motion. There was a, a, a checkpoint about the rolling cylinder and the rolling sphere and uh, one cylinder with a bigger radius and uh, a sphere and this and that. So we will look into all that. But first, we're going to see some rolling motion here. And we have a cylinder. We have two of them, two cans. And we're going to race them. Now, which one do you think will win? Sand one. This one? Sand. The sand one will win? <laughs> this is a happy. OK, let me turn it around. One is sad, one is happy. Why is the happy can happy? Why is the sad can sad? Well, let's see who wins the race, eh? first of all. Okay, here we go. Okay, just fixing your mind, just fixing your mind how fast this thing takes to go down. Roughly, okay, We're, we don't have a stopwatch here. Now let's do this one. You think it'll go faster or slower? <laughs> <laughs> What's going on here? <laughs> Show the first one again. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. You want the first one? You want the first one? <laughs> I'll show you the first one. <laughs> okay, you want to race them? Let's race them. Let's race them. Okay, so what's going on here? Obviously, we are messing around with the moments of inertia. So I'll show you a transparent can. That's like the blue one. It's got stuff in it. Face it the other one. Face it, oh yes. Oh, uh, yeah. uh, no, yeah. That's, That's okay, they can see it. Okay. 
It's got caro syrup in it. Caro syrup is very viscous. Okay? And you'll see that this thing will turn and it'll take a while for the caro syrup to settle down. <laughs> the energy, the potential energy that tries to convert into kinetic energy is all spent, dissipated in the friction of the fluid inside. Okay? If we were to take this outside and let it sit in this weather and froze, then it will be much faster. Okay? So, there we go. So, what's going on now? How can we predict things? How can we predict things and write equations? Now that